Hi, uh, my name is Victoria Yampolsky and I run the Startup Station. In this video, we're talking about best practices in financial modeling for startups. Number one, be conservative. It is not a surprise that a lot of entrepreneurs are optimistic because the failure rate in the startup industry is so high. If you're not an optimistic person, if you don't really believe in your product, you shouldn't really be starting a business. However, your optimism and passion about your product should not translate into a financial realm because this is the realm where you should practice a conservative point of view. You should set expectations of your investors low or realistic, and you should over budget for your expenses so that you're not in a situation where you can run out of money. And this is precisely why it is a good idea to be conservative with setting your financial goals so that you're absolutely sure that you can meet them and exceed them. Number two, financial models should be simple. Yes, businesses are complex and financial models should be quantitative representations of those businesses. However, when you start to complicate things too much with not a lot of information, you introduce so much uncertainty into your model by bringing in too many assumptions that the result becomes random and unreliable. What you want to do is to identify as few drivers as possible that impact your financial performance and focus on really determining what their values should be and how they should change as your company evolves. Number three, your financial model should reflect your business model. This is the point that I've already made before that all financial models are quantitative representations of the business models. And therefore, the financial model should have as many revenue streams as there are monetization opportunities described in your business model. The financial needs that you portray in your business plan should come from a financial model. The valuation that you'd like to achieve for your company should be based on your financial model. The main point is that the business plan and the financial model should talk and they should really complement each other in terms of the information that they provide. Number four, be realistic. This is a different point from being conservative because when you're being conservative, you're trying to make sure that your goals are not too high. When you're being realistic, you also want to make sure that your goals are not too low because when you set your goals, when your revenue goals too low, you make your company an unattractive investment and you can't effectively compete with other startups that don't do that. This is a frequent mistake for female founders that are always too focused on the things that they know they would definitely achieve and they uh, underestimate uh, the revenue potential their company can have and therefore portray themselves in the less favorable light that uh, their male competitors. Number five, the financial model must be logical. So the way you represent your business model must be a logical representation, which will add to the credibility even if there is some uncertainty that you're dealing with, even if you're not quite sure what some of the assumptions are and you're making logical guesses based on industry data or based on your strategy. So making sure that there is a um, solid logic 
that underpins how your model is built will ensure that it's taken seriously by investors, even if they may push you on the values of some inputs. And then if it's built correctly, you should be able to simply change those values and see what the result of your model is going to be. So to recap, the financial model should be conservative and realistic. It should be simple and logical, and it should reflect the business fundamentals of your company. If you like this video, please comment below, like and share with your colleagues. And for more info, please go to www.thesetupstation.com and take class number two that shows you how to build financial projections for each of the seven business models most common in software and service startups. Thank you for watching. See you next time.